Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about asthma. I made a presentation about asthma earlier, but I'm going to make it in a better form right now. Okay, you are familiar with asthma, or someone close to you has been diagnosed with asthma, or yourself, or your kids. Let's go. Asthma is both a genetic problem, in other words, it's hereditary, and also environmental problem. Because in the course of this presentation, we go over all those factors that could be responsible. So it's both hereditary and environmental problem. What are the triggers? Pulling. You been to farm, your granddad is a farmer, or you plant stuff around your yard, or anyhow you are exposed to pollen, you could come down with an attack. Depends on the type of occupation, but some people are exposed to triggers based on their occupation. Upper respiratory tract infection, like common cold, runny nose, sneezing, and coughing. Mostly in children, that will be the beginning of the trouble if they are asthmatic. When asthmatic kids start having sneezing and coughing and runny nose, then an attack is at the door. I have a gasosophageal reflux disease, mostly in adults or middle-aged people, that could trigger asthmatic attack. Dust or exhaustion. As a matter of fact, we always advise children with asthmatic attack to have the power inhale few minutes before onset of any game, any sport, or any form of exhaustion. Cold weather. Yes. Asthmatic attack will be common in temperate regions during winter time more than during summer time. Animal dander. You are asthmatic and you are keeping cats and dogs with your fours at home. Well, you might not be able to put the asthma under control on time. Smoke and smoking. Secondhand smoking, or you're smoking directly, but you're asthmatic, or you are a parent, your daughter or your son is asthmatic, and you are smoking at home. Well, you're not going to help that child to get out of that trouble on time. You are actually going to compound it. Aspirin or bitter blockers. So medications are helpful to many people, but asthmatic patient being given aspirin is not helpful. If I'm asthmatic, please take your aspirin away from my table. Please, don't give it to me. Aspirin is not good for asthmatic patients. And beta blockers. Beta blockers, particularly the non-selective beta blockers, will not be helpful to asthmatic patients because beta 2 is present along the bronchi and we need what is going to uh, stimulate that beta 2 you know, to be able to have good respiratory passage working efficiently. So, be the one selective, if you must give me beta blocker if I am asthmatic, give me beta one selective. But non-selective beta blocker is not going to be helpful. So check the type of beta blockers you are taking if you are asthmatic and discuss with your service provider based on this presentation. Feathers or fall. There was a case of a boy that was living you know, with his entire family and the grandmother 
happened to her pillow made of fur and feather. And no one knew until when it became a problem in the family. And how, how about that? Anytime the boy entered the room of the grandmother, he would come down with an attack. And based on the cultural belief, the poor mother, uh, I mean, the grandmother was labeled as being a witch, uh, being diabolical. But the doctor said, can you bring the pillow or check the pillow, the bed in the grandmother's room and find out what is made of? And when they opened the pillow, well, not too surprising to the doctor, but surprising to the family members, it was made of feathers. And they got that pillow off and the boy remained uh, fully controlled. I mean, the asthma became fully controlled and the elderly woman was saved from being labeled for life as a witch. Perfumes, strong ones, new pains, but so many pains manufacturing companies nowadays are reducing that type of order, so that's good for those companies that might be expensive, but it's pretty good. Okay, here's the problem. A patient walks into the doctor and says, Doctor, the treatment is not working. Treatment is not working? Yeah, okay. The doctor will probably ask, what powers are you using? So going through the powers, then, are you using them appropriately? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, can you demonstrate how you use them? So if it's not appropriate, then the doctor should demonstrate how to use the powers with aero chamber. However, it's not everyone that will be able to afford that, but we can always improvise using bottle and uh, plastic uh, and then covering it, I mean covering the edges with bandage. I will do a kind of demonstration later on. Check for the expiration of the powers. If they have expired, you will not get a result now. How about dosage? and the frequency. So, aware of the possible precipitants, if the patient is accurately using the powers, but is being exposed to triggers all the time, it's not likely that he or she will get out of it. So, let the individual go over all the triggers listed above, then teach to improvise the chamber using plastic. I'll demonstrate later on. Asthma action plan. Grain. Grain means you only need maintenance. And the characters here will be that you use pulse less than three times a week. You don't have attack at night. And the plan here is to continue to use your powers only when required. Okay, yellow means you have lost control. It means there's loss of adequate control here. And the characteristics will be that you use power three times or greater than three times a week, and you have nine symptoms more than once a week, and it's affecting the way you function. And the plan here will be to visit your doctor, use your power as required, and before any exertion. Still on asthma action plan, red means this is an acute asthmatic attack. Because I say it's, uh, it is a continuous symptom, and you're coughing, you're having chest tightness, sweating, feeling of dying, shortness of breath, wheezing, or even silent chest. Silent chest may not mean that you're getting better, it's even a sign that the station is worse. So you can't speak, restless and agitated. Next thing, 
call 911. Immediately, or someone is helping you to call 911, grab your puff, ventilate. Inhale every 20 minutes. Do that. Before you do that for three times, that is one hour. I trust the ambulance people, they would have arrived and you would have been taken to the hospital. But on the way, they'll be helping you. How are we going to distinguish between problems of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthmatic attack in the adults? How? Okay, we are going to use pyrometry. Okay, if for respiratory volume one rises by 10 to 12 percent after administration of bronchodilator like sabutamol, it is asthmatic, not COPD. Let me repeat. We're going to use the same thing, spirometry. But before using the spirometry, you're going to take the value of FEV1. Then administer sabutamol. So after the administration of sabutamol and you repeat the spirometry, if FEV1 is now 10 to 12% above the value you took before administration of sabutamol, that is asthmatic, not COPD. COPD will not give that type of a difference. Bronchoprovocation test with metacoline or histamine could be done by experts. Eosinophil is not specific to asthma, but useful in monitoring medications effectiveness, e.g. corticosteroids. Now the treatment. The beginning of a successful treatment is education on chronicity and reversibility of the disease. It is wise to let the patient know that this is going to be a chronic disease and fortunately enough it is reversible. In other words, Treating you today doesn't mean you're getting out of it if you have the situation a better. But good thing is when you have the attack and you do the appropriate thing or things, then you'll be relieved. Avoid known allergies. Take time to study what you know, triggers your attack. And once those ones are identified, like plague, avoid them. No smoking, in fact, secondhand smoking is detrimental. Live in a clean environment. For parents who have asthmatic kids at home, it is not good to have rock or carpet that could retain dust, animal dandels, and so on and so forth. It is better to have laminated wood or ceramics on the floor and clean all the time. Cover like ventilating alone if it is very mild, but you can add flovin, inhale corticosteroid on daily basis. Let me explain. Your ventilating, that is our butamol, shock acting bitter agonist, is to be used when you named it. But Flovent is expected to be used on a daily basis, every day. Sometimes we prescribe long-acting beta agonists like Sametro with Flovent and inhale corticosteroid with or without Montelukas. Um, if there is acute attack, I will expect you to be placed on medications like ipratropium with sabutamol and budesonide nep immediately. And if it is recalcitrant, then sametro with oral prednisolone, Montelukas could be used, omalizumab, magnesium sulfate, or general anesthesia in that order. In acute attack, the first thing to do is the patropion, 
with Budel Sunil and Sabutamo UNEP. But if we are not winning, we had intravenous corticosteroids or oral prednisolone. We can add longer thin beta agonists like Sametrol, Omalizumab, if we are still not winning, magnesium sulfates, if we are not winning, then general anesthesia. Montelukas is for you no know, prophylaxis, for prevention, not going to be effective in acute phase. Hypertropium is better in beta blocker induced bronchospasm. In other words, if your attack is being triggered because you are using beta blocker, Hypertropium will be good for you. It has longer bronchodilatory effects, though the onset is delayed. It lowers the tachycardia and tremor associated with sabotamol. Tartropium is a longer acting anticholinergic and is used once daily dosing only. It's not going to be good for acute phase but for maintenance. Teovilin is used by aura, but because of the horrible side effects, we put that you know, at second or third line. Aminophilin, well, is still being used in some other parts of the world, but because of these terrible side effects, particularly on cardiovascular system, it is less frequently used in advanced countries. Sabutamol or tebutalin is the first choice for acute phase and for prevention of attack during exertion. That's why we always prescribe ventilin inhaler and advise that if you need to run maybe sport or anything, Take it first before the exertion. Also, proterinol and epinephrine is not commonly used because of the side effects, but pretty good. Baclometazone, budesonide, mumetazone, fluticasone, ciclesonide are used regularly on a daily basis, not PRN meaning not as may be required, no. When you are prescribed or any of this is part of your treatment, you must use it every day, please. You must raise your amount after using them. Why? To prevent pharyngeal candidiasis. You may be told to quadruple your dose if there's history of severe exacerbation in the past. For example, if you're on 250 microgram beclometazone and you have had severe attack in the last few days, your doctor may advise you to quadruple the dose. So make it 1,000 microgram every day now. Okay. The long-acting bitter agonists like formoterol or sametrol are used only in those on inhaled corticosteroid already, or if they are combined. There are so many combinations of LABA and inhaled corticosteroids. It prevents nocturnal symptoms. So those who are having a long-acting Bitter agonist with inhaled corticosteroid combined will have reduced nocturnal symptoms. So the Lucas and Montelukas are combined and called leukotriene receptor antagonists. I mean, they are generally called leukotriene receptor antagonists. They have an inflammatory effect, but the effect is lower compared to inhaled corticosteroids. You can add either the Zavellucas or Montelucas to inhale corticosteroid while you are trying to embark on prevention therapy. Please, Zavellucas or Montelucas 
They are not for acute phase attack. No. Only for prevention. Okay. Still on treatment. Immunoglobulin E neutralizing antibody like omalizumab is administered by a specialist. If you are using tiofilin, do therapeutic level because of the horrible side effects. And that is why most doctors are no longer prescribing it because they push it to the bottom now. Asthma and pregnancy. In pregnancy, ventolin and pumicord could be used. Asthma can cause preterm labor, congenital anomalies, low growth or intrauterine growth restriction, preeclampsia, and placenta previa. Emergency treatment of acute asthmatic attack. First thing is to be admitted. To be admitted, we give us a butamol 2.5 milligram ipratropium 250 or 500 microgram with budesonide 250 to 500 microgram. All these three will be napped. The three meds will be napped every four to six hours or twice then IV fluid will be placed off normal saline half strength with D5 at 100 cc per hour as maintenance. Oxygen will be required if the ultrasound is less than 94 percent and oxygen could be given by NASA cannula at 4 liter per minute. We are going to treat concomitant upper respiratory tract infection. Remember, I said that earlier that that could serve as a trigger. Then, if this is a very severe situation, we are not going to stop at this level. We will add hydrocortisone intravenously, 100 to 200 milligram start. Then, we are going to place this same patient on prednisone per hour, 60 milligram. Now and every day will be telling off for the next seven days. If we are not winning, we can use magnesium sorbate intravenously. If we are not winning, then we go for general anesthesia. If there is associated fever, we are going to do chest x ray to rule out pneumonia. And of course, pulmonologists must be contacted. Okay, I'm just going to run over some available medications for asthmatic patients. Um, the combivine that many people will be familiar with is a combination of impratropium and zabutamol. Comes in strength of impratropium 0.5 milligram, that is 500 microgram, and zabutamol 2.5 milligram every six hours. If you see advert here, that is fruticasone and sametrol, or advert discourse, that is fruticasone 105 microgram and sametrol 50 microgram, one puff twice daily. Um, it depends on the level of severity that will determine the strength that you might be given. Advert discussed around 50 or 500. The dosage of fluticasone determines the name of the advert discourse. Like 250 is fluticasone 250, Symmetra is constant at 50 microgram. Symbicord is what many people are also familiar with, that is budesonide and formotirol. A one or two inhalations, and the inhale is momentazone and formotero twice or pressure meter dose inhaler twice daily. Some strength names will be encountered in the course of asthmatic treatment. 
particularly the names of the medications. Pumicot is budesonine, fluvent is fruticazone, viva is beclometazone, avesco for ciclesonine, asmanes for mentazone, acolate for zavelucas. You use zavelucas every morning before meal and 10 mg every evening after meal. Singular is Montelucas, 10 mg at the hour of sleep. Why ventilate is Sabutmo, either the NEP or pressure meter dose of this course, ventilate is Sabutmo. Bricanin, Tebutalin, Faradis, for Motiro, Spiriva is Tautropium, Atrovin is Ipratropium, and Serven is Sabmetirol. Dovent contains ipratropium and phenotyrol. Four means of it will contain 500 microgram ipratropium and 1.25 milligram phenotyrol. You need that every six hours. But in some situations where the asthmatic patient must take aspirin, or the asthmatic patient must be involved in exertion. Then Montelucas or Zafelucas will be very helpful as preventive measure or prophylaxis. Symbicot, that is combination of the sonide of Pomotidrol, is good as both acute and preventive therapy. In children, we can follow this algorithm. You admit, do arterial blood gases. If it is 94 or greater, that's fine. If it's less, give oxygen per nasal cannula. You nebulize ipratropium, sabutamol, pumicot every four to six hours. Give intravenous hydrocortisone. Now we're going to wait. We'll wait the patient. I'm going to give six milligram per kilogram every six hours. Then, prednisone, one milligram per kilogram per hour once daily for five to seven days. If we are not winning, invite a specialist, the pulmonologist, who can prescribe omalizuma and IVs albutamol could be embarked upon magnesium sulfate if you are still not winning at 75 mg per kilogram slowly over 20 minutes. If you are not winning, we go for general anesthesia. Uh, some will consider amnovilin intravenously before constraining general anesthesia, but there must be good cardiovascular monitoring. If there is no success despite the treatment, then we must ask ourselves, are we working on the right diagnosis? If asthma diagnosis is confusing, then we should start thinking of some other problems. One, Vocal cord dysfunction. Could that be the case here? Okay, if that is the case, how are we going to know? There will be no night wheezing. There will be no symptoms at rest. That is focal cord dysfunction. Is this gastroesophageal reflux disease? We need to ask the patient. When they lie down, and when they see it up, any difference in the symptoms, any water brush, heartburn, so on and so forth. Post nasal drip, when they sleep, when it's cold, when is it worse? In the, the, they will know they have clear about that. Sixty fibrosis. Has this person been screened for it? Is 
the mother a carrier and the father a carrier or anyone in the family ever been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, they can do chloride sweat test. There's a separate presentation on cystic fibrosis. Please check it out on my channel and you're going to get everything about cystic fibrosis there. So genetic screening will help here and chloride sweat test. Collagenous syndrome we have repeated otitis media as part of the problem. I have made presentation on otitis media already. Please check it out. I made presentation on sinusitis also. You can check that. And is this rhinitis? Then when you are able to rule out all these possible causes, then you know that you are dealing with a difficult one. But sometimes it might be that the diagnosis is even wrong on its own. So it's not all wheezing that is asthma. And it's not all the time that you have a silent chest, no wheezing, that the asthma is gone. Actually, that might be the only sign that the patient is about to die when you have silent chest in asthmatic attack. In conclusion, asthma is a condition affecting many people. It should not be killing people because it is reversible. If properly applied, there are many medications to help with the avoidance of triggers. Please contact your physician. I am truly wishing all affected people well. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Kindly subscribe so that you can get this presentations immediately they are published. Thanks.